Good morning, YouTube. How you doing? It is bright and early, around 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. I'm all over the place in my videos. You can see this giant pile of leaves. That is from all the yard work that has just been done over the last couple days. Uh, I haven't been posting a lot, mainly because my house has been a wreck with the weather. Uh, last uh, four or five weekends have been rain or something scheduled with my family and I just could not get to it. So I had some help yesterday and we got everything taken care of. So finally, finally, I can actually do some, so you can see like, look, it's, 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 it's nice. Like things are clean, which brings me to something that is not so clean. So you can see here, here's the, uh, here's the trailer finally drug it out oh by the way freezing outside right now <laughs> so, so yeah yeah i will be getting in the garage shortly but you can see here's my old trailer i really do love this thing because it's it served me extremely well over the last few years but it's in pretty rough shape so i'm, I'm trying to decide whether or not i want to do a a total restoration of this thing uh and then make a swing down fender here uh, but I don't know how hard that's going to be to do or whether or not they're the uh, the fenders I'm sorry the suspension on this are in decent is you know is in decent enough shape I may need to get some axles for it, but you can see it is a extremely beefy trailer it tracks very very well so You know, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about what I want to do there um, I really do like the trailer. I do have to do some things to dramatically improve it but um, now that I'm finally done all the annoying yard work for the winter, I got one more thing to do before I put the trailer away. And this is something, if you don't use your trailer often and don't move it, dumb shit like this happens. <laughs> there was so many leaves and underbrush here that had grown that this is actually a asphalt slab here. You can see it towards the back there. I am going to get in here <clears throat> and probably power wash this at some point but it definitely needs to work you can see there's a little spot there where i backed the trailer into it so yeah good deal dave but here that used to have shit growing in it so <sighs> we can finally work on cars guys let's get in the garage let's get warmed up let's get started on today's video all right talk to you soon all right guys before we get started on today's video about a wideband o2 install the proper way uh, I just wanted to cover a couple of things related to the Holden Showdown. First off, the pictures and video are finally coming. So I talked to Mike um, from Jersey Devil Photo, LLC. He there he took an enormous amount of pictures. So, so there was a lot of work on his end to get that ready. They will be slowly trickling in. We should have a little bit of video potentially this weekend that I'll be able to share with everyone. But we're going to make that a nice packaged uh, setup for everyone, send that out the door. Um, but everyone who attended um, the showdown will have that available to them. Um, I will also be stealing some of it for my own usage, of course, but uh, I paid for it, so therefore I'm allowed to do that. Um, also, we have two raffles that are still going, uh, and I will provide the links, and I would really like this to be filled out before Christmas, so I'll put the links in here. One is for a set of wheels from uh, Klotz Brothers Racing. Uh, Nick Klotz was, um, you know, generous enough to put in a hefty discount and basically a $1,500 for either, however you want to configure it. If you want to do like two really nice rear wheels, that's up to you, but it's $50 a spot and, um, did I do that right? No, I'm sorry. It's 50 spots, $30 a spot. So I could do math. Yay for me. But $30 a spot, 50 spots. There's probably about 30 spots already taken. And what that'll allow you to do is, you know, depending on how many you want to purchase, you can have a really kick-ass set of wheels. Now, you'll have to wait a little bit to get them. You may have to wait like four to six weeks if you need, if you're getting something that's not like readily in stock. But you're going to get a smoking deal. If you, if you only put one in and you win for $30, you're getting a really more than $1,500 set of wheels for $30, bucks. All right. I don't get any money on this. I don't make anything from any of the stuff I'm doing, including these videos. So, um... There's that, and there's also the splitter, and if you're familiar with the videos I've done on the splitter, that is also available uh, as well. So that one, I believe, is $20 a spot, 25 spots, um, and that is either for the GTO, the PP, I'm sorry, the GTO, the SS, and the um, G8. Those are the three that Josh Jacks from JT Carbon, uh, he, um, I may have said that wrong, probably Jake's. 
I think I said that wrong. Again, sorry, sorry, Josh. But JT Carbon makes a kick-ass product. This will be the Carbon Splitter, same one I have on my car, available to you for $20 a spot. And there's, again, 25 spots open. So let's get down to business on this wideband install, and uh, we can go from there, all right? Stay tuned. Okay, guys, so here's, here's where we are with the O2 sensor install. I rigged it up at Cecil for the Holden Showdown. And what I have here, it's an AFR version 2, AFR 500 uh, from Bollinger. Uh, really good stuff, Bollinger Mo Motorsports. Really, really, really nice product. Very detailed, give you a lot of good information on how to get this thing set up. I had it basically rigged in and zip-tied in, <clears throat> excuse me, out the door and then kind of snaked through inside the interior of the car. And then the power and ground were sent to the trunk and... Uh, for the most part, <laughs> and uh, I'm not ashamed to admit this. Let's get that out of the way there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Apologize for clearing my throat so much. Um, you know, they give you an immense amount of cabling in there. I will have to get under there and just disconnect the wiring harness, but I zip-tied everything in. Very simple install. And what we're going to do, I'm going to just rest this right here. They give you plenty of harness. I will probably have to deep pin that harness, unfortunately, to do what I need to do. But we're going to bring everything in. And I'm still going to run it on the driver's side of the car because main reason for doing that, and it's very simple reason, is that on these LS engines, for whatever reason, and I, maybe it's intake design or fuel distribution, however it works inside the, um, the fluid dynamics of it. Whoa, huge hand in there. Sorry about that. The fluid dynamics of the manifold and how it was designed is that number seven cylinder is always the lean cylinder. It's always the first to go lean. So I want to have my O2 sensor on that bank so I know that if, if I'm doing wideband, any type of tuning, I want to make sure that this, this, this bank, but in particular number seven cylinder, is protected. So if it has to run a little bit leaner, that's fine by me. I'm not installing two widebands because I'm not insane. Uh, I could do that, and now that I think about it and mentioned it, I may be insane enough to do that at a later date when we start putting more power into this. But Long story even longer, you have this fuse box right here. Very simple to get in here. Let me just get this out of your way. My apologies. And you can see that there is a lot of open area in here. In particular, so if you go over and you orient this so that it makes sense for the makes sense for your install. If you look here, so you're looking at it like this, and here's a, a description of what's going on. Now, I may have this wrong off the bat, but I will protect it. I will, I will up, um, fix this. But if you look down in here, sorry, and you go right there, pin 46, number 46. So we look over here, 46. There you go. It's five down from the big one up at the top. So let's see if we can do this. If we're looking here, so if we try to get them both in view, 55 is here. Looks like you got 56. And then there's a bank of small ones here. So then we go right here is let's do this let's try let's try to do this in an orderly fashion so we got uh one these two are blocked that's that's 43 and 44 45 46 is a 10 looks like a 45 46 is the fifth one down and i think that is correct because then there would be a 30 amp yep so that's correct so this guy that i'm pointing to here this 10 amp fuse oh come on there you go focus there we go that guy is the guy we're going for this will be the ignition switch for our relay for our harness that we're going to end up sending through the engine compartment through the firewall so this guy right here will be a 10 amp fuse that we're going to put a switched they're basically going to do like an adelaide type of thing to the fuse uh, and let me show you. I may be able to easily find one of these things in my shithole of a table right now because I apologize. I have not cleaned up yet from from the showdown. I basically just came in here. Oh, here, yeah, this is another gem. I ordered the really cool Christmas tree ones that you basically pop into the hole that have it. So then you zip tie it. And guess what? It was supposed to arrive same day from Amazon. Amazon screwed the pooch because guess what? I don't have that and it's not going to get here till Tuesday now. So great job, Amazon. Way to screw that up. But here you go. Here's the thing I'm talking about. Fuse taps. So what we can do is I'll have to trim it a little bit, but I'll be able to take that, that fuse tap and put it in right here. And that will be my power for the uh for the system now i'm going to check right here this empty one here may also be available to me so i'm going to check that as well 
because it definitely does have power to. If that's the case, then it'll be nice and clean to tap off of that well. But I think the 46 is the one we want. 46 or 48, these are the two that we care about. And then what, what I'll easily do is just run a wire out, very simply. We'll run a wire out, and I'm gonna mount a um, fusible base, um, relay, I'm sorry, relay, and that will go to one of the pins on the relay. And then from there, what we'll do is very similarly to how we ran the wiring for the um, fuel pump, we're gonna tap in, go underneath where the cabin air filter is, and there is a grommet there that we can pop a hole in and run the whole harness inside the passenger compartment. Now, I may need to get myself a coat hanger to figure out how to get all this to negotiate through, but you know, that, that'll simple stuff. But what we'll do is we'll take this harness off of here. That'll get us inside. Then what I wanted to use those zip ties for, the Christmas tree zip ties, is I wanted to run the, the wiring over top of the engine like I did with the um, uh, O2, I'm sorry, with the uh, fuel, fuel pump wiring and just pop those in, but that's not looking like that's gonna happen this time around. So I'll figure out a nice route to run them. And then what we're gonna do is run it down the back side of the engine where the normal uh, O2 sensor wiring goes. And then what I'll be able to do is just zip tie that along as, I, as it goes down, and uh, we'll be able to be all, already on the driver's side of the transmission. And then, sorry, I'm gonna turn this around. Ooh, blocked it, ugly. Uh, so what we'll be able to do there is um, have the the wiring, everything in place. It's not gonna be sitting on any exhaust. I'll be able to file, uh, follow a clean path down so that I don't have to worry about uh, anything burning on exhaust. So that'll be that. And then once it's in the engine, oh, I'm sorry, once it leaves the engine compartments in the passenger compartment, easy, easy to do any of the work on that because then I can just route it inside the car and I'll figure out a nice spot to, cause they give you a little piece of like double-sided tape or Velcro that I'll hook it so I can easily see it in the car, probably on the side of uh, the, um, the um, passenger side there of the console or something like that. I'll figure that out. That's easy. <laughs> the hard part is getting it into the passenger compartment. So stay tuned. Let's get down to business. Okay, guys. So I didn't show a lot of what was going on here. It's actually pretty straightforward. I will go back and do a little bit of an update for you uh, so that you can see what we're doing. But you can see here's the relay. And really all that has to be done here is you get one of these fuse taps right here. You put it in 48, not 46. I said 46 earlier, but 48 is the empty one. 46 has the 10 amp fuse in there for, um, sorry, there you go, you can actually see it a little better. 10 amp fuse for uh, in sourced ignition for the inside of the car. And then I just ran it down, down the side here. And you can see this is, they give you really bad color for the wires here, but long story uh, short, it's pretty straightforward. You, you, you um, and I may have this wrong, but it's 86 comes from the ignition here, goes into 86. And then if I remember correctly, 85 is ground, so 85 will go to here. 30 will get a fused link from here. So this will come, I have just a seven and a half in, uh, amp fuse that goes into the blue line underneath. And then the yellow line is what uh, is remaining, and that is 87, and 87 will feed your wideband O2 sensor. And then what I did here is I actually came in across and I did, I have some stuff here and I don't know if you can see it too well. I don't know if it's gonna help with the lighting, but you can see I did a small modification here, drilled some holes. I ran my, um, whatchamacallit, map sensor over here as well. So you can see that the, the map sensor is tapped in down here. It's all tucked in real nice and pretty, but you can't see very well under here I actually run the line down and into the O2 sensor, just like it would if it was the uh, rear O2s. This guy is the um, auxiliary fuel system. That's all tapped in the, the way it should be. And then over here, the only modification I do here is this, I notch this out a little bit here. And what that's supposed to do is when you come in to put it down in here, now this may be a little bit uh, of a mess trying to do this without uh, two hands. So Okay, so it really doesn't take a lot of work to get it, but um, I had to adjust this a little bit to get in there. But then it's closed, and I'm going to put some wire loom over this so it's not as obvious because this, you know, everything is in here nice and clean. And I'm going to put some uh, some stuff over it just to kind of hide it a little bit better because the, the you know the red and the you know makes it's real obvious. And the white it just looks like ass. But what I'll do is I'll I have this all together so that it it's nice and clean when it's run. You can't even see it. But for what you guys have been waiting for, 
So we come around here. I think I got my, my keys in my pocket. I'm gonna leave this sitting up here like this for now, but it's gonna be a little bit of a rough start. But you can see, here's, here's what I did. You go inside the glove box, boom. I got a double-sided double uh, tape with Velcro on it. It's what comes with it. It's on there nice and tight. What I do is run it through the, and you can't see it, it's not the greatest view, but you take, oh boy, that is terrible. Uh, what I'll do is when it's lighter out and I have the light, I'll go back and show you. But you take that kick panel off right there, and there's two holes that have been stamped in the wheel well over there. You'll see this black plug just above that. If you pull that plug out and you go in, it's like, it's a hard stop. There's actually a piece of metal there. You can't go up into the, into the, uh, uh, side of the uh, wheel well there actually further back like got called uh, front door jam so if you drill above it and I'll show you this later because I got to put a grommet in there you run that in you can actually snake it in with a um, with a coat hanger and bring it up there get your hands in there and then pull the wiring through and then what I did was I just ran it up to the side there and I'll put a grommet right there just pop the hole right in the side of the glove box and that allows it to move all around. Those are the two wires that I'll be plugging into the uh, HP tuners right here into my M MV MPV uh, Pro. It'll be on the positive and negative terminals there. I'm uh, sorry, the digital and, and, and ground terminals there. And then, okay, so what we'll do is just so you guys can see, let's, get, let's do a quick start here. So in, I should have the keys. Uh, the sensor initializing itself does a countdown. I had already calibrated it uh, track, so it doesn't need that anymore. But you can see, there you go. Sitting it, you give it a little burp. That's pig rich right now, so I'm not going to run it too much. I'm going to end up actually uh, getting the um, which we'll call it back on the. Um, I'm going to put Shane's tune back in, and we're going to do some driving videos, hopefully tomorrow, while it's still way up. But, there you go, guys. All right, guys. That's it. That's for today. Um, I figured I'd stop it here because the driving videos, it's night out. I can't really do anything with it. Plus, my trailer's back behind there because I just had a whole bunch of, like I said, a lot of yard work that was done. So, and I also have some cleanup over there that I'm going to do tomorrow. But tomorrow, I promise, we will take her for a ride. I will cover all the things that I missed today. Uh, with uh, running some of the wiring, but it's very simple. There's a very easy path to run the wiring up over the uh, passenger side fender liner. Uh, and then I'll show you where I drilled the hole and how I ran the uh, wiring up into the uh, passenger compartment. It is very straightforward. I should be getting the grommets on Tuesday. Uh, so stay tuned then. But uh, for all the new subscribers, thank you. For all the continuing subscribers, I appreciate you. Let's uh, see if we can... Uh, Maybe uh, make it to a thousand subscribers before um, before Christmas, or maybe how about New Year? All right, um, I'm gonna do a lot more driving videos. I'm gonna try to get it to the track also, so we can get a little bit uh, more um, uh, perspective from uh, what this thing will actually do. Um, but uh, stay tuned for the uh, driving videos, uh, probably in the next uh, install, which should be tomorrow or um, Tuesday. But um, you know, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Hopefully you get a chance to be with your family. Um, hopefully you get a chance to get out there and race a little bit. There should be maybe, you know, should be warm enough to maybe get a couple passes in. Just be safe and uh, take care, guys. Thanks for watching.